right guys, I don't know if you can see me alright. I've just got down to Walcott. too soon. Two ounce lead on. Same leader, 55 pounds. In a quarter of a mile, you will arrive at your destination. Smooth down. Let's get him on up. I think that's me done. I'm going to get back to the car on the side, you know. Morning, guys and girls. How are you doing? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, welcome to the Norfolk Fishing Channel. Today, I'm just down on the Riviera again. Doing a, just a bit of river fishing, feeder fishing, uh, whip to hand, five, six metre whip, um, six metre pole. I've got down here, I'm all set up, I thought I'd do everything first. <clears throat> I haven't even cast in yet, I'm having a big freezer clear out today, I'm just using all my bait up that was in the freezer. I've got the first lot of ground bait out of the freezer, I re it, riddled it off. I've got loads of hemp, loads of frozen casters is I'll show you in a minute I've got uh, dead maggots pinkies squats uh, sweet corn just using a big freezer clear out and get rid of a lot um, I did go to the shop yesterday and just bought a pint of maggots but um, I just got down here and I'll sh quickly show you the river and there we are I think it's five o'clock sun's just coming up I've set up the river's absolutely tonking through at the minute. Let's bring this back in. Oh, I'll leave that for a minute. Yeah, so I've got three three and a quarter ounces on there. I've got the Shakespeare Mat 1 XT 14 foot heavy feeder rod with a three ounce tip in it. I've got a 10 pound shock leader and 10 pound braid. Three three and a quarter ounce lead. On that one, when the river starts to ease up a bit, I've got my trusty Daiwa Porky Pig. That's sorry, that's with a Shakespeare Mac 2 XT 5000 mil. This one's the 13 foot Tornado Z Porky Pig, heavy, mediums heavy feeder rod. Again, I've got the 10 pound shock leader on here, down to 6 pound mono. It's got a two ounce feed on here, twisted boom, running lip rig, 2.8 pound hook length, and 18 hook on that one, 16 B520 on that one, and that's a B520 on that one. And then, uh, let's move around. I've just got a five metre whip. I'm just going to be loose feeding 
castors and hemp, and then uh, and the catapult him. So yeah, the five meter rig. So she's using a whip. So a 1.2 gram shouldered sort of bolster style float. So you can hold it back a little bit with that one. This one I'll predominantly be sort of like fishing it dead depth and slightly on the drop. It's got a spread bolt there. Of two number sixes, it's really pushing quite hard today, so I don't want anything too light. It's just going to get washed away. That's just down to a really fine 1.5 pound hook length and a tiny little size 20 B511 on that one. The camera's in B511. This peg's a bit tight, but managed to clear a bit of room. Got six meter fully te carbon take apart leader Arbrello. Uh, first three put in, and then top three telescopic, which we've got flick tip, flick tip in both of these. This one runs all the way up to 1.5 gram Drenum Trio float. The same with an Olivet. I've got five number eights underneath the Olivet. I can bring them down into play if I need be. String them out. I've got a number 10, number 10. A number eight Olivet, but I can bring these down in a size 18 B520 on that one. And I've got the pole as well, which I'm going to be six, seven meters to hand. This is just again very similar but slightly beefed up. It's really pacey out there today. Well, it always is here. I've got the three gram census float. Wash them. I've got a fair bit of drop on there, so I can swing it out. Oh, bloody freezing this morning. Not like yesterday. It's 2.5 pound mainline. Down to the two and a half gram bulk, or uh, olive X, should I say. And the 2.2 pound hook length. We've got some number eights on the hook length. And a size 18 B520. Start off I'm gonna start off on the feeder. I haven't got a hook length on there, the hook length's here. So I'll, I'll cast out, I'll show you in here, I'll swing you around, and then uh, I'll probably put about a dozen feeder falls in and get some bait down on the bottom. But it's holding Quite nice. What I've done is I fished this peg before. I fished along here before, and there's a nice flat spot, two thirds of the way across. 
I've got it clipped up. I'm casting out, I'm pulling the rod back. I'm standing up to do it, feeling the lead down and just holding it, wait till the tip drops back. And I'm just sitting, sitting down, lowering the rod, putting a bend or bow in the line. So I'm not reeling in. Um, and it's holding quite nicely. Clam bait, I've got just uh, what was out of the freezer. So it was a mixture of 50 50 brown crumb, green crumb, with some fish meal in there. Biscuit. There's some two meals in there. I've got some <coughs> more two meals here, and I've got sweet corn to go in it as well. All right. Catch you in a minute. I'm just going to stand up for this. Just shaking the feed a little empty. I wish there's some would come up. I was always going to potentially put the shorts on this morning before I left. I'm bloody glad I didn't now. I'm shivering. I don't want to go too heavy on the bait when it's this when it's flowing this hard. It's just going to get washed away in seconds. Another 10 of them in. I should be about ready to fish. Okay, I'm all ready for the first cast. I'll just put 10 feeders out. I'll just put on to start with two dead rag, uh, red maggots and two dead flora pinkies. I've just got some uh, these are all a bit frozen, but some uh, dead squats, pinkies, and maggots in there. Casters, hemp, red maggots, corn. There's two lots of ground bait. I've got some two mils in there. That's not snag. That's good. Right, there's a point in the rushes, I know where I'm aiming, slightly upstream, slightly up tiding on the beach. Just keep your arms straight. Hit the clip, keeping my arm up, keep the rod up. Watch the tip till it full goes back, just there. And just slowly going to put the rod down, let a bow form. rest. My hands are freezing. It's so cold this morning. Might need some more weight on there by the looks of it. That flow's so strong this morning. I have to step up to four ounces. Not that I want to. But.
come off at the net. <laughs> right, what happened there is, you can see why it came off. One of the dead maggots have folded back over the tip, so I'm just going to use a couple of the live maggots, but I'm going to just roll them to the dead, just nip the tail, so they sit on like that. But also, at the start as well, I want to keep busy. I've got a stopwatch down there. I'm keeping an eye on, I just want to give it three minute casts to start off with for the first half an hour. Just to keep that bait going through the water. I need this this morning. That sun's just starting to get a tiny bit of warmth in it. it was seven degrees when I got got here in the car, but then obviously this last hour, Last hour of the night, first hour of the day, it's where it's coldest. There's no heat left in the earth and the ground. It's been really cold this morning. I'm really trying to keep the rod as high as I can. Let the feeder settle, keep the rod way up high. Putting a bow in the line. As I say, I don't really want to step up to three and a half, four ounces if I can. And this way it seems to be if anything touches the bait, and it's dislodging the weight and hopefully hooking itself. It's typical, as soon as I turn the camera off, tip drops back, nice skimmer bream. It's warm. And, uh, what I'm having to do is... Where's he gone? You've got to be careful there because uh, the prod of the bank, you can see there, it just drops off straight. Make sure that's in. Yeah, I'm having to stand up and keep my arm up. To get the fish up on the surface before it hits all these reeds and stuff. I'll get rid of all that snot. Maggots untouched. There's a thing, as I say, with this flow, as soon as anything touches it, it's dislodging the feeder and they're just hooking themselves with the bolt rig effect. There's having a few uh, live maggots in there, a few dead pinkies and squats, a little bit of pinch of everything, a few casters, three or four bits of sweet corn. <laughs> Just top it up, you can see all the from that carpet session I had. A load of two mils in there as well. This reeds banking's annoying. I 
Just slightly loose feeding as well at the minute. Casses and hemp and tears. We've got some plenty of tears in there actually. Some nice big tears. Hopefully the roach will get on the tears later on. doing is <clears throat> I've stepped up the hook size now and the hook length so it's had a nice skimmer I lost it again so it's going to have gone for 14 slightly long hook length I'm going to go for my favourite bream skimmer bait two red and a white Try a bit of sweet corn in a bit. The flow's definitely easing slightly. Still pushing, but it's not as bad as it was the first thing. Nice skimmer. Just changing up that hook length seems to have done the trick. That's better. Yeah, it's half six. <clears throat> We're in like the last 45 minutes. The slow's really eased. Really eased down. I was about to switch over to my other rod. So I think sometimes this one's a bit overgunned.
nice fat skimmer, a couple of pound. Stinks it, like they all do. Right, I'm just going to do the same again. Just double red maggot. Just going to go one through the head. Try and pick two nice big fat ones. Just let that boat pass. Seven. Just switch rods. Flow's pretty much stopped at the minute. In fact, I think it might be just starting to flow the other way now. Right, it's so, 35 past seven, or four minutes past. I've just stuck a really small feeder on. There's hardly any flow out there now. It's just easing up all the time. You're having to put a fair bit of teddy on this to get it out to the clip, but just have one row. Uh, I'm having to wind down to it now because zero no flow. Like a tip. You can see the bike's a lot more positively now. The other rod's just too heavy, tip's too heavy, rod's too heavy. Feed is too heavy. I mean, I could change the feeder, but uh, the river's constantly changing, the situation's constantly changing, so you've got to change with it. Nice little roach. <clears throat> I just switched over a lot smaller, lighter feeder. It's just taped up with some electrical tape. Just to stop the ground boat coming out on the way down. I want to get it all the way to the bottom. So this is on a couple of dead red maggots. These are dead pinky. But I've just cut my rig and simplified it. Let's get a couple of tangles on this one. So I've got rid of the twisted boom. And I've got rid of the swivel. So the hook link. It's gone straight eye to eye. And a running rig. And straight away. It's made a difference. Another little roach. Just tiny little rattle on the tip, that one. I remember from last time I'm in the right spot. But, uh, just getting a few of these back. That's a good area for the bream because I just like the, uh, there's a bed of swan mussels out there. And obviously the fish feed on them. I'll be able to get a couple of more casts before I've got to uh, step up the feeder again, I think. It's more the feeder, but I'm packing the bait in.
It's starting to flood quite hard now. Here's a bike straight away. It's just a small rope, isn't it? Mr. Perch, Drill Sergeant. Yeah, let's get back out there. You can keep an eye on the sky. We'll do the same again. Two red maggots. It's always amazing me in the fish, isn't it? Something ain't working, ain't right, you're not getting bites. One or two little changes can make all the difference. Don't just sit there. Have an experiment. Lengthen the hook length, shorten the hook length. Go heavier, go lighter. So many things you can try. a slightly longer hook link and uh, it did have a tiny little hook link swivel on there but I've got rid of it gone back to uh, old fashioned uh, running rig oh no it's just a nice perch Open it up, smile for the dentist. It's clean down there, eh? thought it would have been more maggots. But... but, you know, it's got a mouthful of maggots. <laughs> I'm just going to give this one more cast. It's not holding. I'm going to have to step up the feeder. She's doing a double red maggot at the minute. It seems to be working. But I'm hooking it. Both the maggots through the tail. On the thin, skinny end. Just before I cast out, actually. What am going to do? Keep that feed going in. You see, like these, this dead red, dead reds, and dead pinkies and squats. I mean, squats are brilliant bait. People don't use them that much these days, unless they're on the canal. But I swear by them for any bream wherever you're fishing. It's so tiny. Squats compared to maggots and stuff, and it's like, you see the difference. The squats 
squats are probably about a quarter the size of Pinky. He's tiny. But I killed them because um, I think they probably do an even better job, they just sit on the bottom. There's like a little particle. I mean, people use micros now and commercials and stuff, but it's like a similar thing, it keeps them grazing. in there it's starting to thaw out now it's still ice cold but that tip is yeah it's not holding anymore so you have to put a, two casts ago that was perfect and now it's just starting to trip out a little bit Dreamy shake of the head. Yep, yeah, it's definitely brilliant. Standing up and keep my arm right in the air because you don't want to get them under these reeds because you, know, you lose them. Get in. Just a few little changes makes all the difference. Come thick and fast now. Ooh, right on the outside of its mouth. Shbladoosh. Well, I've just got back on the uh, original rod, what I was using, and the original rig. It's just getting a bit too much for the rod now. And I've stepped up the feeder twice. That's it. The rod's bent double. Oh, not bent double, but it. It's a bit uncomfortable to cast, I don't like casting it with such a heavy feed on. I've gone back to a 14 foot Mac 1 XT heavy feeder on, say it's 3 ounce tip in here. That just I barely lifted into that, just barely lifted into it. That is a nice rod. It's just tight. Got to get you. So anything else? You've got a nice rod, nice golden. It's got to get used to it. We'll keep this bait going in. Plenty of casters. This is try caster. We get a nice golden caster. 
what I like to do. You can hook it like a maggot or you can bury it, but I like to bury it. Push it inside, and what I normally do, just pull. So you can just see, if you can see, the point of the hook. It's just come, just breaking through the side of the shell. Just one more cast, and then I'm going to move that bulk on that olivet down slightly. too hard before pulling out the fish. So there's a nice roach. A lot cleaner on the on the caster. I just might just stick to caster then. If uh, you get a better quality of fish on the caster. In fact, let's just see while the camera's on and running. If taking the, the tears. This hook's probably a little bit small for tears, but it's going to nip it through the top. And again, just roll it, just so the point is ever so slightly coming through, just like that. All right, guys, how you doing? I'll just quickly show you, I'm just going to hook this fish and then I'll be with you. Nice little roach. Oop. Just down here today on the Riviera. Just doing a bit of pleasure fishing. I'll just quickly show you my peg for the day. Just down here opposite the boat champ. Got down early this morning, been on the feeder, had a few bream and skimmers on the feeder. It's gone quiet. So I'm just using the seven metre whip. Just fishing six metres to hand. Just uh, feeding hemp and tares and casters. I'll just turn you around there. Fish are coming up in the water all the time, so we're sort of like two thirds depth and just fishing it on the drop, really. I'll spin you around, keep an eye on the peg. Really nice roach and rudder at the minute. Got some nice days, some big rud. But it's far more productive on the pole and the whip than it is on the feeder. Fish are just staying down my peg a bit, so I'm trying to feed slightly upstream. Now 
Another little roach. It's one a chuck. Really one a chuck. Just on single white maggot. In every sort of second run or every two or three fish. Just feeding casters and hemp and tares. But I'm going to try and feed us. There's a fair, fair flow on it. It's not as strong as it was this morning when it was ebbing, but it's on the flood now. But it's not too bad. But it's a deep peg, and obviously, the time it's taken the bait to get down to the bottom, the fish are at near the end of my peg or the end of my seven metres. I can think of worse places to be. Just holding the float back as well seems to help. Just like that. We're in again, one after the other after the other. Nice roach. Have a play around with my shot. You gotta keep feeding there. You gotta keep feeding. There's so many fish here, I don't know if you can see, you probably won't be able to see, but just down in the shallows there, there's tens of thousands of them, black with them, tiny little fry from this year's spawn. They're everywhere. I started off on the bottom. It's one and a half gram rig. But I've moved the Olivet right up to under the float. Now it's got four Number eight sh shots bulk down the line. Well, I've spread them all out now, shirt button style. The seven really slow drop. In fact, just looking at the far bank and how much the water's come up, I might just put another couple of inches back on on the rig. As I say, I seem to have lost contact with the fish, but they're still there, they're just right down the peg. I did say I was going to stop for coffee and take my top off. And then I changed my mind and did a 
Facebook Live. And now I'm sacrificing my coffee. How you all doing, all right? I'll turn you around so you can see me. So it's far better view. <laughs> Another one. I'll just quickly uh, show you around my messy peg. Let's get this one in. She's using a 20 cameras in B511. Tiny hook. 1.1 pound hook length. 2.5 pound main. One and a half a gram rig. I'll just quickly uh, spin you around everywhere. I've got two feeder rods set up. I've got a Chase Beam at 1XT 14 foot heavy feeder. A three ounce feeder on there. It's 5,000 uh, Chase Beam Mac 2XT reel. 12 pound leader down to 10 pound braid. I've got medium heavy die with Tornado Z. Uh, porky pig feeder rod it's got a two ounce feeder on there 4000 Shakespeare Max 2 XT reel it's got a 10 pound shock leader to 6 pound uh, down to 2.3 pound hook length and a size 16 cameras and B520 spin you all the way around In the beautiful bait tray today, we've got some lovely maggots, casters, uh, hemp and tares, some casters, we've got uh, dead pinkies, dead maggots and dead squats. I was having a freezer clear out, that's the reason I came down here. Ground bait, some green swim stim and corn uh, and crumb. We've got a few two mil pellets in there. Selection of feeders, some strawberry sweet corn and normal sweet corn. And a selection of poles and rigs. I've got my 30 meter pole. I've got a 6 meter whip to hand there, but I haven't used that yet. I've got a 5 meter shallow whip, which is working well. But the best one is a 7 meter whip at the minute. I'll have this another go for half an hour and then uh, another. We chuck the point back out there. And have a we go at the feeder. Now it's high water. But uh, I sport myself a few maggots yesterday, and everything else has come out of the freezer. Ground bait, micros, dead maggots, dead pinkies, dead squats, hemp and tears, casters, everything's out, freezer clear out. So we use a lot today. And so far, has it done me any harm? Not at all. I always freeze my ground bait, but you know, when, when it come out, it will be dry because obviously in the freezer dries it out. But as long as you riddle the ground bait once it's defrosted, riddle it, get rid of any particles that are in there, any dead maggots or what you've been used before, and any lumps. Then when it's defrosted, just add a tiny bit of water at a time. You don't need a lot to, because it's already fully absorbed. It won't take a lot of water to bring it back round and then just riddle it again. Just to go easy on the water. Because it'll go for go over if you're not careful.
as long as your bait was fresh and good before going in the freezer, it's not going to be any harm using it up. You know, don't put it, refreeze it if it's gone sour or anything like that. It's a nice roach. Try a caster, caster, what do you say, caster, 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 I think Americans say caster. Right, single caster, caster, whatever you want to call it, caster. Come up north, and then we'll try the tears on the hook as well because you can get some really good quality roach and rud on tears if they're taking it. I seem to have found where they're balling up now, it's just right down to the Right in me there. Right, let's put a nice big bit of tear on the hook. Basic tear is just a seed, like hemp seed, but it's bigger. Just soak it at least 24 hours bring it to the boil and just simmer it five ten minutes it's just soft enough to put the hook through but there seem to be just down there so I might as well instead of cast, casting up there and chopping it down I might as well just put it where I'm getting all the bites just around about here or for you about there but there's a Don't like the way that's set. Let's go back out there. Right, let's get feeding. I want to catch one on the tears. He missed it. He missed it. Flew under. Normally, really good fish when they start taking the tears. You know, we get all the big fat daddies. Another section on so I can follow the float a bit better. That's better. Let the float. As soon as you go out, that extra half a foot. Oh, missed it. There's a lot more flow. If you come right close in past these lilies, there's very little flow. And it just seemed to be right on the edge there, right on, right on a crease, the crease line. Getting the bites, we just can't hit him, so we'll go back to the maggot. Okay. 
Right, that's a one more fish for you, and then we'll sign off. I ain't going anywhere. I'm just going to hold that float back a bit. He's holding it back. He seemed to like it. And I think I'm going to have to have a play back because uh, they've come off the bottom again. Every time I'm striking, it's taking a second or two before I can feel the fish. So it tells me they're going down for the bait. Like that. And then uh, they're obviously swimming back up with it in their mouths. So they're going down to chasing it down. Then they're going back to where they feel happiest. All right, let's get this unhooked. And then that. All right, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. I know I'm a bit sideways. <laughs> so, nothing new there. I'm always a bit sideways. I want a coffee. In fact, no, I don't. I want a cold drink. Right, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you again. Take care. Oh. Well, I've just done a Facebook Live. This has just come off a live on Facebook. I've re refed quite heavy. Well, I've fed three times, three handfuls. Look, it's got. I only put a maggot on, but look, he's got hemp in his mouth and all sorts. Really nice rod. Look at that. Gorgeous. Seems to be a lot of really nice big rod on the broads at the minute, the last couple of years. Outstripping the roach. I'm not complaining, they're nice to see. Put up a good fight and all. It's like a mini cruising car. Well, that little change seems to work. <clears throat> I've just gone back on the maggot, I've shot white maggot. And um, what I think, I just moved all the shot up, apart from we've got two, I've got one little number 10 and one number 9 dropper and I move that bolt back up and I don't th I think the uh, let's get this mag on I think the fish are moved up in the water and they're taking it on the drop because if the last two fish I'm striking but I'm not feeling the fish for a second as before I connect with it, so it tells me that they've come up in the water like that and they're sort of like, they're coming up to intercept the bait but once you get it right reason that uh, little tangle was very obliging <laughs> but uh, it says to uh, told me one thing net net them you've got the landing net there if they're that big I'll have to land everyone not be lazy because if they ping off you ain't get normally trashed but I was very fortunate there But what I'm going to do in a minute, you see that float dipping away. It's normally the fish taking it on the drop before the bolt settles the float. So as soon as it's going down, fish are pecking at the maggot before the bolt has, has had time to...
there are mite. If the flow is nice and steady like it is, and I think the fish are coming off the bottom. That's another nice rud. But why sit on the pole all, uh, on the feeder all day long and catch fish like this? On a chuck. Lovely little rod, very chunky. It's almost like a little cruising. That hook's come out in a minute. Right, the white maggot seems to be doing the the business for the quality roach and stuff. Yeah. Okay, what I'll do is, I know they say if it's not broke, don't try and fix it. But... I'm always looking for a way to speed up what you're doing. Catch more fish, don't you? What? We'll put more fish in the net, land more fish. So. I'll get this next one in, and then I'll pick up the other whip and have a play around with the shot and pattern on that. Stretch my arm out, let that go, because I think they are down. Further down the peg. It's obviously taking a little while for the uh, hemp and tears and castor to uh, reach down there. Obviously, it's, it's pretty deep. And if you notice when I'm Throwing it in. I'm throwing it slightly upstream. More so the casters than the hemp. Yeah, that says to me that they're taking it, that maggot, literally as it goes in the water. You get those strange bites. Roach. Well, what I'm going to do is pick up the other rod. I mean, this is doing all right. You can probably still uh, plug away on this and catch. But uh, like I said, I just want to see if I can up the catch rate a little bit or just speed it up a little bit. So I'm just going to pick up the other rod. Just move that bulk shot up. In fact, I'm going to leave it for now. See what the state of play is. I mean, 
this is a lot more. Reach with this one, isn't it? Just need to get it. This is right close in this rig. I'm going to sit forward with this. See if they were taking it on the drop. I'm going to move this bolt shot right up under the float. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move that shot up. Alright, what I'm going to do, for these last two or three fish, I need the disgorger, and when I'm striking, they're up on the surface. So I'm going to shallow right up just to have a play and just see how shallow they are. See that maggot's well chewed too. He's had that in his mouth for a while. Let's get another maggot on. And then let's just shallow this right up. Well, not right up, but take another. Let's get feeding. Take another six inches off. Deep at all now. There you go, look. Just wonder how, how shallow they actually are. I mean, you're going to get the smaller ones shallow, you're going to get the you know, the, the shallow you go, you probably get bleak, and then a bit deeper you get dace, and then under that the roach. But uh, we'll just see what's what. They might be mixed together, they might not be. But if we start just catching tiny little dace and things like that, we'll put more depth on it. See what I mean by uh, just experimenting, just trying things. Don't be afraid to try things. You know, you're not going to get told off. No one's going to come and tell you off. Oh, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be feeding like that. It shouldn't be. You know, the only way to learn, the only way to 
fathom things out. Let's get out there and practice and just do it. Just do it. I'm not really funny, but to... when I was, you know, when I was growing up, there's no internet, no mobile phones. There's a few DVDs, uh, not even DVDs, no, we weren't even DVDs, videos and magazines, and that's all you had. And obviously, word of mouth from getting out there match fishing and talking to a, other anglers and getting experience. So that didn't float, didn't even go under, but I could just tell by the way it's moving, swishing about in the water, the fish are taking the bait. <coughs> As I said, I probably can get away with float half this weight. But I'm only on a day out, it's only pleasure fishing, so. Let's try a red maggot. Just try stuff. But you gotta keep the bait going in. You know, I see people Yesterday's a couple of young lads. Cheap six foot rod and waggler. Sat there all day not catching anything. It's because they're just not feeding anything. Well, it's really high tide now. <clears throat> what I've done is The other six metre whip was drying up a bit. So I've just put on the uh, pole, six metres to hand, three gram rig, and it's, it's just sitting in the water so much better. It's just doing what I want it to do. I trod it through really nice. I've got it dotted down. I've just taken a bit of... A little bit of uh, depth off. Might just take another inch off as well. That's where I want to be. There's a nice flow out there. And the float's not getting bullied by the flow or anything, there was, a, there was a little bit of a, not now, downstream wind starting to occur, so it's just making the other rig a little bit difficult. I can hold back really well with this. We've got elastic for this, number four. Solid elastic. I feed it less often, but a little bit more, a bit heavier. So only sort of like every third put in, third fish. I'm just feeding a little bit more, just to help push them down a bit more, keep them on the bottom. What I might do is, let's see how this goes. I might try the fit feeder again. With it being uh, this high, it's not the chance of a bream or two. And it's only, it's quite a nice steady flow. It's not barreling through by any means. I'm just going to slow that right down and hold it back. I mean, that's where the, they are. They've been getting the bites all day. Not, not there. But with this, I really just inch it down the peg. It's slightly overshot it because I want to hold it back.
Miss that one. That's just me, if I let the float go like that, it will naturally sink because, as I say, it's overshotted. But I want it slightly overshotted because the river's flowing quite hard, it's quite pacey. So I want to just hold it back, hold it back. Just give the time, the fish time to inspect it and take it. I mean, you can't hold it back stationary. If you want to do that, I've got some lollipops floats, flat floats, what you want to call them. Try a red maggot. Come off. Oop. Come back, you. No hiding. No hiding. Sorry about this. Oh, you are. Well, I well, can't get you. There you go. Go, you little sod. Right. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to rest the peg. So I've given that a fair good going. Let's go let them resettle. What I was also thinking as well, if it's coming towards the end of the day and uh, got some bait left, I might uh, riddle that ground bait off and then just to keep them right down, just put a little bit of dead maggot, hemp, Casters and tears in the ground bait and feed a little nugget every cast through. But uh, we pick up the feeder, see if anything sort of like moved in over the ground bait. Give me that time to settle as well. So, that's it. It's coming up to 11 o'clock now. Mr. Heron over there, you can see him. It's coming up to 11 o'clock now. I'm going to give it 15 minutes on this. If I don't get any signs of skimmers or bream, then I'm just going to put this down for the rest of the day and. Uh, It's not a bad roach, but I can catch them in front of me ten times quicker. But yeah, I'll give it 15, 20 minutes and then uh, a minute. Let's go back on the other whip.
Or maybe not. Yeah, what we'll do. We'll go back under the whip. Let's have a play around with the shot and pattern. Just gonna hook that under there. Just gonna put that back. Grab this one. I'm gonna take a bit of depth off of here to start with. Not a lot on it. In fact, you can see on the far side that that's actually it's, the tide's coming up actually. It's, but what I might do is this rig looks like it's going to favour it a little bit more. I can move that Olivet right under because there's quite a lot of dropper shot there. Move that olive out right under because there's still a fair bolt there of uh, one, two, three, five number eights. Let's see what's what. I think the better fish are slightly deeper. There's better roach and rud. What I might do It's gonna fish this shirt button style on the drop, old school Wagner style. Oh that can't actually Okay, and what I am going to do, I'm going to take this top off because it's bloody boiling now from one extreme to the other. And I'm going to grab a cup. And then what I'll we'll probably do I'll see how this works and performs. But I might pick up the six metre whip, or the pole, with six metres to hand. And he's got a three gram rig on it. I just want to see if uh, there's any decent quality roach a little bit further out. But if, if this rig's going to carry on working, there might not be any need. That seemed to be a better cleaner bite that time. Float just nicely buried away. I can search the peg a lot better with this rig as well. I've still got another section to put on if I need to. But the float just seems to ride the water a little bit better.
got a little bit more control of what I can do and hold it back if I can. Just slow it down a little bit. Hold it back. There you go. Just checking the float there and holding it back. Just allow the bait to flutter up. Ooh, got a roach in the face. <laughs> so. There you go. It's the motto. Just try stuff, okay? Just try stuff. It might be a case of... Now, what I'm thinking is... Maybe not feeding every single time, little and often. Well, I still feed little and often, but less often, but a tiny bit more. So, catch two or three fish, and then feed a decent amount. I'm just going to hold that back a bit. Just hold it back. Slow it down. Hold it back. Definitely a bit further down the peg, and they like it hold, held back. Old spotty. Right, let's carry on with this. Well, I've got another fish on, but uh, the lessons learned. I shouldn't have come off this line on this six metre to hand pole. Um, Started messing around, we went back on the feeder. Um, it wasn't good. It's too much, too many boats. River's really full at the minute. Still, it's tonking through out there, even with three ounces on. And I messed about with the uh, other whips. I just had a nice uh, roach. Like I said, I shouldn't have come off the uh, this three gram rig, but I was messing around with the feeder and the other two whips when things weren't right. So, as I said, it ain't. Ain't broke, don't try and fix it, sort of thing. I just had a nice uh, roach. Like I said, I shouldn't have come off the uh, this three gram rig, but I was messing around with the feeder and the other two whips when things weren't right. So. As I said, it ain't. If it ain't broke, don't try and fix it, sort of thing. Yeah, it's just too much flow and water on it at the minute for anything else. I mean, it would be, what would be good today actually is a. Uh, uh, I was on an arm bringing it, a bolo rig, and uh, bringing a 17 foot map rod, or my 15 foot Browning float rod. And uh, trotting a, a waggler through would be ideal today, I think. A, a waggler and a, a big stick or bolo float trotting through would be perfect with the flow. You know, just search your peg a little bit more. Uh, 
That's the bottom there. So about a pole length over depth. I'm going to take that off then. Just see if that makes any difference. Plumb. I've left the plumb on. Bang on, bang on. Okay. Should be able to uh, leave that section on now. as well while I'm here. I'm just gonna use hemp, not too much. Hemp and caster. We're gonna put quite a bit of caster in because I want to use these up. Feed a nugget of that every time. Just a bit like that. See if we can get them down on the deck. Re really sort of congregate them. See if that little change works. Take the shot off, re-plumbed, moved it down, float length. Oh, pulled out that one. I'm going to let this one flow a bit more. I'm going to hold it back.
I let this one go. There you go. You're a lucky one. Well, it seems to have worked. Right, I'm going to start netting these because I don't want to trash my rig and start to be a bit lazy now. Yeah, you think they're, they've gone, they've drifted away and, you know, people sit there, oh, the fish have gone, there's no more fish left, or whatever. They haven't, they're still there, you're still feeding, they'll still be there. They've just changed their feeding habits, and you need to work it out. I mean, I'd lost contact with the fish, the fish hadn't gone anywhere, I was obviously fishing way over depth. The pole presentation wasn't right. Roach bream hybrid. At the minute, it's working. Small nugget of ground bait. Every cast through, but not pressing it hard, letting it explode. And I'm just Emerson slightly holding it back. Not too hard, just sort of half speed. Just checking it. I think it's giving the uh, fish time to look at it and sort of realise it's there, otherwise, it's going to be whizzing past their nose because the fish will be sort of like holding stationary Ooh, the right out on this one it's we want to end the day in and then we'll have a look what we got Skimmer, roach skimmer. Whoa, it's a clonker of a roach. Look at that. Right, I'm going to get packed up. I'll show you what we've got in the net. There you go, how about that? Just shy of 20 pound there. 